Um, good evening. My name is Felicia Hyland, um, and I'm coordinator for family and community engagement for the division. I um, oversee this program, and so I'm so happy that you have chosen to spend an hour with us this evening, as well as um, you know, learn this material. We tonight will talk about our MTSS program, um, which is a school-wide behavior um, expectations and how that uh, program helps every student in our school division. So we're excited to share this information with you tonight. Um, our presenters for the evening are going to be Mr. Nick Keir. He is a student services specialist here. And then we also have Dr. Ashley Reiher, who is our equity, diversity and inclusion um, coordinator. So they're going to present for us this evening. If you have questions as we go, feel free to pop those in the chat and we will facilitate a Q&A just before we end this afternoon. But when the question arises, just put it in the chat and then we'll, um, we'll get to them in the end. So um, sit back, enjoy, and we look forward to sharing a little more about our MTSS program. Dr. Reiher or Mr. Keir, I turn it over to you. All right, well, thank you very much, Felicia. It's very exciting to be with you all tonight. Uh, my name is Nick Keir. I'm Student Services Specialist. Um, and one of my roles is to uh, oversee across our 16 schools, as well as in the Virtual Academy, um, the multi-tiered systems of support um, uh, initiative that we have here in the division. Um, we've been implementing in various ways for four or five years. Um, and WJCC Schools is part of something called the Virginia Tiered Systems of Supports, which is a state um, state program with the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, and we're going to be talking with you a lot more tonight about um, how we are working to create a, a positive and successful uh, school climate uh, for your students um, to get the most out of school that they can. And I'm here with Dr. Ashley Ryer, and I'll let her introduce herself. Good evening. It is a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Um, and as Nick said, we are going to work together this evening to provide some information about our multi-tiered systems of support. Um, so in my role as a coordinator for equity, diversity, and inclusion, a lot of that work is focused on making sure that our instructional program and other services and supports in WJCC are designed to meet the needs of each and every learner. Um, and so you will learn in just a bit, a few slides from now, um, that that is referenced specifically in in our strategic plan goal for educational equity, where MTSS is used as a mechanism for providing for every student the supports that he or she need um, in the area of positive behavior. So we wanted to just take a moment and talk a little bit about MTSS in context of WJCC. So on this slide, this language is actually taken directly from the WJCC Student Code of Conduct. And so you'll see here that MTSS really designs a system for supporting students' behavior in a way that's prevention focused. And so by prevention, we mean that before needing to respond to a student behaving in a way um, that is not desired by the classroom, teachers, or other adults in the school, we want to teach students Students what the expected positive behaviors are. Um, and that starts with defining those. So that's one component of the MTSS framework, um, as well as teaching students how in the different environments as they go through their day, they can exhibit those behaviors um, that align to the school-wide expectations, which you're going to hear um, in greater detail from Nick. Um, but some examples of this might be um, how students are expected to transition in the hallway from location to location in, in our elementary schools or from class to class as they transition to their different courses throughout the day at middle and high school. Another part of MTSS is to recognize and reinforce appropriate student behavior. And so that's asking the question, how are we acknowledging and telling students um, and giving them feedback about their behavior when they are behaving in the way that we want them to behave that's all set up for success and in positive interactions with their peers and, and staff in the school environment. 
And then the final component is just what do we do when that doesn't occur? Um, and so that will involve some strategies for how we reteach those positive school-wide behavior expectations when students um, aren't exhibiting them at least you know, at the outset. So MTSS is really guided by what we refer to as a tiered approach to behavior support. Um, and so tying into that theme of educational equity, um, a goal of the tiered approach is to provide support to each and every student um, based on what he or she needs, when he or she needs it, and to do so with a sense of urgency. So we're responding as soon as we see a need to intervene and help a student who's having difficulty displaying the positive behaviors that we would like them to display at school. So on this slide, you will see the trademark triangle that is often used to represent a multi-tiered framework. Um, and so this is representing each of the three tiers. So tier one supports are universal, and that means that they're the things that are provided to all students. So it's learning about the behaviors that are expected in school. Um, it's likely being reinforced, um, getting praise, or even some sort of ticket or token, as an example, um, when those behaviors are demonstrated. Tiers two and three go on to provide more specific um, and specialized supports to students who might need more than what's just available at tier one. But the unique thing about this particular image of the pyramid is, is that you'll notice that it's 3D. And that means that students who even are receiving a higher level of behavioral support are still going to get all of the practices that are in place in those lower levels. So when we say that tier one supports, which we're primarily going to focus on in our conversation this evening, um, are provided to all, we really do mean all. So some students might be receiving things in addition to that, but that tier one teaching of behaviors um, remains intact for all of our students. On this slide, we wanted to take an opportunity again to just provide a frame. Um, and so when looking at the WJCC strategic plan, Elevate Beyond Excellence, you will see that there are concepts of positive behavioral support that are embedded throughout multiple goals. Um, MTSS is specifically named in goal two, but in goal one, um, there's language that talks about the promotion of positive student relationships, um, meeting students at their level and challenging to, them to reach their highest potential. All of that can only occur if we have students who are in a positive classroom environment surrounded by a positive school climate. In goal four, we talk about specifically the development of students social, emotionally, and supporting their mental health needs. Again, all connected through a positive approach to behavior support. Um, and then in an additional goal, there's reference to using data. Um, and so one of the things that occurs through our MTSS framework is there are teams at each school who spend time looking at school-wide behavioral data and making decisions around what they're seeing and experiencing in terms of an, an elementary example might be um, if there have been more challenges with behavior existing on the playground setting. How might a school respond to that in terms of reteaching what are the safe and courteous and respectful behaviors that we would like to see specific to the playground? So that's just an example for you about how data is a part um, of the total approach with MTSS. All right, so we're going to put you all on the spot a little bit and just see if, um, if you all you know are familiar at all with one of the kind of hallmark pieces of our MTSS implementation in our schools and it's totally fine if you're not and we're going to give you a cheat sheet in just a second as well um, but one thing that um, is in existence at all of our schools um, is a set of school-wide expectations which are kind of broad set of terms um, sometimes it is in fact an acronym and I'll explain that um, actually in a second oh and I see somebody put growl in there that's from the Clara Bird Baker Bears, they growl. Um, and now the, the question is if you know what those letters stand for. So we'll see if other folks um, who are, are joining us might be willing to put in the chat, if you know um, at your child's school or schools, uh, you know, if you have, if you have students at, at multiple schools, um, certainly put in um, 
uh, multiple school acronyms or uh, sets of terms if you want to. Um, at the, the school that uh, my daughters go to here in, in uh, WJCC, uh, their acronym is SOAR, um, which is, oh man, I'm going to be in trouble if I don't get this. Uh, it's safe, organized, accountable, and respectful is what those stand for. And in a few minutes, we'll talk a little bit more about how those kind of form the basis for a lot of uh, the instruction um, as um as Ashley was talking about, um, but so we've got, all right, so we've got Growl, that's a Clarabur Baker, yes, Patriot Pride is a Matthew Whaley, um, and I'm not sure if I know this, that's uh, respectful, I know is one of them in Patriot Pride, I was like talking with um, a Miss Forger, who's the assistant principal at Matthew Whaley about the Patriot Pl Pride pledge just last week. All right, if anybody else ha knows any of theirs, go ahead and throw them in there, but I'm going to. Somehow I, somehow I muted myself. I apologize. Um, but I just put a link in the chat uh, to a PDF that has, um, for all 16 schools, uh, it has um, that behavior acronym. Some of them are a little more stylized than others. Some of them uh, just have uh, the terms, um, and some of them have more explanation. Um, so you can take a look at those and, and, and you know, find the ones for your schools. Um, but uh, each school um, sets up their own set of expectations. Um, so it's th there, many of them will connect with um, you know, something about the school. Maybe it's related to, again, the mascot or something like that. So as someone kind of put in their growl is from Claire Bird Baker, which is the, the bears. Um, and they, they definitely talk about the bears growling at that school quite a bit, um, as I've heard. Um, so many of them are connected that way. They don't have to be. Um, again, the, those teams that Ashley was talking about, they develop um, the, the resources and the supports uh, for um, adults in our buildings that are supporting our students as well as for students um, around what those schools need. So there will be some differences for sure. Can you click to the next one, Ashley? So there's just two examples, um, again, where it is connected. So we've got one, one of those at uh, Laurel Lane Elementary. Uh, they are the penguins, and so they went with four P words. Um, so theirs is not an acronym, uh, but it is a set of terms. Um, and at Laurel Lane, they have a pledge as well that they do every morning where they, they talk about these terms. And then at, at, at uh, Berkeley Middle School, uh, since they are the Bulldogs, um, they went with paws, like Bulldog paws, and you can see there uh, what each of those letters stand for. Um, and so, like I said, I'll speak more about this um, as we get into the specifics at, 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 um, at how these expectations are used. Um, but your students have very likely heard these things quite a bit um, at their schools, whether it's pause or the four P's or the Patriot Pride Pledge or growling or um, again at different schools they have lots of different ones and uh, we'll show you several examples of those of those as well and you have it in the link um, so you can actually see it at all 16 schools what their acronym is. Go ahead Ashley. So why do we teach successful school behavior? And so I think that um, the quote that's on this slide in the top left portion of your screen is a really powerful answer to that. Um, so if you think about the different skills that your child is developing, um, some at school, some at home, and hopefully overlap between, um, when students are struggling. So for example, when a student is struggling to read, we spend more time teaching. When a child is learning to swim, we teach them how to swim. Um, multiplication, a secondary example, when our teenagers are learning to drive, we teach them. So if a child doesn't know how to behave, part of the goal of an MTSS framework is to intervene through the explicit and direct teaching of what the expected behaviors would be. And that's part of that preventative approach. Um, so there's some other 
quotes on this slide as well that just kind of underscore the need um, that students really have to learn what it's expect what's expected of them and be given opportunities to practice demonstrating behaviors in a positive way. All of this is done through a home school connection. Um, so we hope one of the goals of approaching this through a family academy is that before we leave you this evening, um, you all may walk away with a way that you can use this knowledge of what your child's school-wide behavioral expectations are to reinforce those positive behaviors at home as well. On this slide, you will see that this concept um, is really grounded in research. And so um, another name for MTSS, the branch of it that's exclusively focused on behavior is PBIS. That might be a familiar term to some of you. And that stands for Positive Behavioral Expectations, I'm sorry, Interventions and Supports. Um, and so here tonight, we're focusing on what's in place at that school-wide level, and you will see that there are um, lots of studies that have shown improved student outcomes. And so that includes academics, social emotional, um, a reduction in bullying. Um, for any secondary folks, um, it may be noteworthy that there's decreased rates of student reported drug and alcohol abuse that have resulted in schools that have high implementation of PBIS programs. Um, reduced exclusionary discipline. And so what that term exclusionary is referring to, it's when a student's behavior results in them needing to be removed from a classroom or in the most extreme cases, even from the school. Um, and so we know that when we start with a positive approach, when we teach behavior directly, there um, is less need to utilize those more extreme responses. Um, and finally, improved teacher outcomes. So teacher perceptions um, of school climate, school organization, um, and just teacher self-efficacy, which is a teacher's belief that he or she has the ability to really influence student learning. Um, and so all of these categories of areas have been shown to um, have more positive outcomes when school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports through MTSS implementation um, are in place in schools. All right, so, um, you know, uh, I have shared already uh, about those um, school acronyms. And again, that's that general set of expectations uh, for students. Um, around, you know, what those successful behaviors are going to be in school. Um, and then schools have taken those and they actually determine what are the specific behaviors that students are going to show in school in order to demonstrate um, those expectations. And I'll give you an example of that in just a second. Um, they've also broken that down across different locations in the school. So in the examples that you're going to see in a moment, uh, and I have an elementary, a middle, and a, and a high school example to share with you. And I will also put another link in the chat to a, a, a PDF of that so you can see it a little bit better. The, the wording might be a little bit small on the screen, and I apologize for that, but wanted you to be able to see the, the, the full uh, picture of it. Um, and so one thing that we definitely want to, you know, address um, in, in this session um, is that when we're talking about teaching successful behaviors in school, we're really just making sure that we are explicitly addressing for all students here in school, what are the kinds of behaviors that are going to lead them to be the most successful. Um, so we absolutely, you know, rely on parents to be that first um, like, you know, reinforcer or first teacher of, you know, what's going to make you successful in life and the behaviors that are going to help you to be successful in life. Um, and we're absolutely not, you know, trying to encroach on that in any way. So hopefully you'll see as we get into the matrices in the examples, and I'll just go ahead and go to the next one so you can see it, um, that, again, these are just very specific to um, within certain spaces in a school um, and within those that uh, behavior acronym, which we have because it makes it easier for the students to remember. Um, you know, it's like a mnemonic device that you might have. Many of you might remember, you know, some of those from certain like math. Um, I remember, you know, SOHCAHTOA or PEMDAS or other things like that. Or I remember the 
the the order of the um of the planets um although you know the version that i have it's you know pluto um is included in there but this is again it makes it easier for students to remember and then they can reference it easier they know um, what happens in certain spaces so this is um the uh, matrix from Norwich Elementary School, uh, which uh, their their mascot is the Roadrunners, um, and so they went with the behavior acronym of Tracks, which you can see there is trustworthy, respectful, attentive, cooperative, kind, and successful. And then you can see across these different locations, and so they explicitly teach to students: okay, on the bus, you can show that you're being respectful by using kind words. In the hallways, you can show that you are being cooperative by walking in a single file line. Or on the playground, you can show that you're kind by being friendly and including others. Um, so explicitly teaching in these spaces, um, again, helps all students know the best ways to behave and then also helps um, our teachers and the other um, adults in the building who are supporting students to reinforce, provide feedback, reteach as necessary. So on the next slide, uh, we have a middle school example, and I know this one is very hard to see, so definitely take a look um, at that link that I put into the chat. Um, and so this one, they've oriented it the opposite way. Uh, that at, This is for Hornsby Middle School, and they are the Hawks, um, and so they uh, are SOAR uh, for safe, organized, accountable, and respectful. And then you can see how they've divided it um, very similarly to what we saw with Norge Elementary School across different locations um, and how students will um, will display those. And you can also see that, you know, the, the developmental levels of the students is going to change some of that language um, and, and change the specific ways that students are going to demonstrate these terms. And so you see here that on Hornsby's that they actually have a specific section around technology use and how students are going to show uh, these four expectations uh, with their use of technology. Um, now that certainly elementary students are using technology quite a bit now as well, um, but as students get older, there's likely more and more of it. And then we just go ahead to the third example that's up here, um, which is a high school example. This is Lafayette High School. Uh, so you can see they are the Rams, uh, which is respectful, accountable, motivated, and safe. Um, and so they have their the specifics. And if you're familiar with the actual building of Lafayette High School, you know uh, where some of these specific places are. So they've got you know their school why, what do these look like, and then again with these um, specific areas within the school, how are students going to be able to again demonstrate those those successful behaviors that are going to lead to, you know, sort of as, as Ashley was speaking to, um, you know, being able to focus more on academic content in the, in the classroom, allow, um, you know, more of our students um, to stay in classrooms as much as possible, because we know that's one of the biggest factors on supporting student success is how often they are in their classrooms. And so that reduction in exclusionary discipline um, that, that Ashley talked about and the research supporting a lot of this is a really huge factor in um, you know, why we're implementing MTSS. Um, and again, we're, tonight we're focused on that tier one, the behavior side um, in terms of what we're implementing in the schools. Um, we could potentially do a later family academy around um, some of those, those higher tier type supports. But we wanted to really put a showcase on um, those tier one supports. And I've got some really awesome pictures I'm excited to show you in, in just a few slides of some, some really fun and great things that are happening at our schools. All right, so um, you just looked at some of those examples of uh, the behavior matrix that we have at each of the schools. And then from those, those are kind of like the curriculum for our schools around, again, those successful behaviors. And so then our schools are able to develop resources that are going to help students to know those behaviors, to learn them, to practice them, to get feedback, and also to help our teachers and our counselors and our assistants um, to support our students in learning those. So uh, schools, you know, develop lesson plans for the beginning of the year as, as well as kind of built into certain times of the year um, to uh, teach the expectations and to uh, go back over them. You know, often 
just leading up to breaks, whether it's Thanksgiving or winter break, um, or you know, in these weeks leading up to spring break, as we get ready to leave out from the school year, uh, these times where we wanna just refresh students uh, on making sure that they're fully aware of um, all the expectations and, and again, giving that feedback. If you're in schools, you'll see a lot of posters up where they might actually have the expectations break it, broken down for that specific space. So you see a picture there, that's at DJ Montague Elementary, where we have, I don't remember the name of the Mustang, but they are the Mighty Mustangs. I know there's a name for that mascot and I just can't remember it right now, uh, but that's the Mighty Mustang um, actually demonstrating in the picture how to uh, walk through the hallways and you see they have it broken down there. And a lot of schools have those kinds of behaviors. So when students actually enter to, into the physical space where there are specific behaviors that are expected and that they've been taught, there's a reminder there. There's a cue for them to know to do it. Um, things certainly happen in you know, class meetings and assemblies where schools are able to you know, come back to those, the matrix and the behaviors and, the, and what they've been taught already. Lots of teachers do a really fantastic job of connecting the, the specific kind of behaviors that are going to be successful within their classrooms for uh, you know certain activities. So if there's uh, if students are going to be participating in some you know small group cooperative learning um, activities, teachers have a specific set of behaviors that are going to help students to be successful. That you know there if they're cooperating, they're taking turns, if they're sharing responsibilities, those kinds of things. And so teachers explicitly teach those skills to students to help them to be successful in completing the work and showing what they've learned, what they've researched, what they've put together as a group. Um, and again, just to make all of that much more successful. Um, and we do have a lot of schools that have student involvement. So the, the bottom picture, uh, that is the Jamestown High School flight crew. Um, and so they have, it's a set of students um, that's actually a, a really terrific, re terrific representation of the population of that school. Um, and they actually advise the, the MTSS team around what's the student experience like? What are some things that could improve it? What are some things um, that, you know, they might, that the adults in the building might not be as fully aware of or understand quite as well? Uh, and so particularly at our secondary schools, we have more student involvement going on, but st students across the division have opportunities to, to, you know, kind of share feedback with their teachers and their principals around these behaviors. Um, and it's really, you know, it, it, it can be really, really powerful. Uh, I have a couple other uh, pictures that I can share just from a, so from a few of our other schools. Uh, so that top left picture, that's Berkeley Middle School and uh, some of their signage that they have up, um, again, around just kind of, you know, valuing their students and letting them know how much they are supported. Uh, that bottom one in the middle uh, at James River Elementary and how they have tied into their, their um, anti-bullying work and inclusion work um, to, you know, get all students on board. It's really closely connected with their MTSS um, work that they've done at, at James River. Um, top right, that's at Matoka Elementary. Um, and so th we showed the example from Hornsby before. Uh, Matoka, they're the Cardinals, and so they are also sore. Um, and so you can see there, they have up around the building this, uh, these, these um, you know, bulletin boards, again, with the specific behaviors on them for students to be able to see it around. And then again, uh, back to the example of Norge Elementary. Um, so they actually developed specific materials for student or for teachers, um, and and essentially like a um, a plan for when are we going to teach specific behaviors uh, for certain areas, those kinds of things. They provided activities, they provided books that that um, that the teachers could utilize in the classrooms, um, and so that's just the specifically the week one example, uh, but there are that they had a whole the whole first few weeks of school for implementing um, all of these different uh, all the different lessons on the on, on behaviors. I think we even have some more examples on the next slide. So there we got Hornsby Middle School. They have a really, really beautiful poster of their um, of their um, behaviors uh, and these are posted up all around the school. Um, if you've been in Stonehouse Elementary, um, they have lots of murals up on the walls. And so one of those murals um, is their behavior acronym, which they are the starfish. Uh, and so they, STARS is their acronym. So you can see that's safe, tolerant. Uh, it's positive attitude. 
uh, respect and strive I think it's strive for greatness uh, or something along those lines um, is their behavior acronym. So they've got these things up around the building. And then this that last picture, uh, that's from uh, James Blair Middle School. And kind of similarly to what I showed you with Nords, they have uh, they had a set plan for the beginning of the school year of when are we going to teach these specific expectations. And so this was provided to teachers to, you know, make it not overwhelming for them, make sure all students were hearing all of the information. Um, and, and you know, so schools have lots of these kinds of systems in place, again, to make sure students are fully aware of the expectations. All right, go ahead, Ashley. So in addition to explicitly teaching the expectations and students have opportunities to practice them, uh, we do want also make sure that we provide feedback to students um, and we acknowledge those are su successful behaviors. Uh, I will briefly talk about, um, you know, how we um, address when students are not showing those successful behaviors, uh, but there's a lot of ways that this might happen, and this varies a lot across the different schools, um, particularly with the different levels. So I'll, talk, I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, so the most common way that um, our, our teachers and administrators provide feedback to students is by speaking to them. Um, they let them know, you know, you did a great job on, um, so if we use the, 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 the top picture, um, that's from uh, James Blair Elementary as well, uh, you know, you were being respectful in this way, and thank you for doing that. And they, they point it out, they provide the feedback for it, so students are going to repeat it. Some schools might have like a token economy, so um, there's some other pictures that'll show up here in just a moment, uh, where students might receive uh, like tickets. Yeah, so in that far right picture, that's a Matthew Whaley Elementary. Um, students receive tickets uh, when they are you know, caught um, uh, displaying the, the, the correct behaviors, and then they actually go by and, based on their grade level, they go by and drop off their tickets um, in these boxes. And I think there's a drawing for students, like they put their name on it, and they draw a um, it's a drawing for students to, you know, get some prizes, get some get some feedback and acknowledgement. They get their name read on the morning announcements, all of those kinds of things. Um, this was back on the previous slide, but uh, there can be uh, at the secondary schools, we see less of the token economy, but definitely more things um, where, uh, you know, like uh, student of the week or student of the month where students are nominated, um, you know, maybe for some academic exploits, but also maybe for some, you know, showing positive behaviors and, and things of that sort. Uh, in the middle uh, here, that's from Tawana Middle School, and this is their, their, their tiger role that they do, and I think they do a couple of these every single week. Uh, students get nominated um, mostly by teachers, but they actually, I think they may actually have a way that students can nominate each other. Um, and this, this group, they get pom-poms, they, they go around to the school, uh, they go around to the classes, um, and they really celebrate students who are you know, showing progress and are, are, are demonstrating those behaviors that they really want to see. Um, and then on the, on the left there, you see that's a, a, um, a flyer for a three-on-three -three basketball tournament, tournament that's happening at, at Lafayette High School. Um, and so they have there, you kind of have to earn your way into being able to uh, participate or in order to watch. And they have a lot of different avenues for that. Uh, but again, they're, they're, they're acknowledging and then they're providing reinforcement for um, that behavior um, that is, you know, that's, that we know is going to lead students to be successful in school. Um, and on the previous slide, one of the bullets was a, a, a collaboration with uh, SHIP, which many of you are familiar with SHIP if you've participated in other family academies. I think it's our most fam our most popular family academies are the SHIP ones. Um, but uh, SHIP was a, has been a big support order of, of MTSS tier, uh, tier one behavior implementation, providing materials um, that, you know, promote students being active. Um, so, you know, basketball and soccer balls, jump ropes, other things of that sort that have been provided to schools um, so that either individual students might be able to earn them with uh, some of those, you know, tokens and tickets we talked about, or like the, uh, in this actual bottom picture, that's at, at Stonehouse, and um, that's uh, classes actually earn basically like a punch card. And so classes, when other teachers see like this whole class was being safe or, or they were being tolerant, whatever, they get like a compliment. They, you know, they earn that particular star. And then when they filled it up, they have, 
you know, the class gets to pick a reward that they're going to have. Um, and so sometimes the materials for that has actually been provided by SHIP. So big, big thank you uh, to SHIP for, for their, their support of our implementation this year. All right, you can go ahead, Ashley, a couple, got a couple more examples. Uh, so one that's, that I also really enjoy uh, as we, we do some, some teacher acknowledgement of well, as well, or, or adult acknowledgement. So in that top left corner at Warhol High School, they give out the Crystal Apple Award. Um, and so each class, so the start the seniors did the first, the uh, first month when they implemented this and then the juniors and sophomores and freshmen. Um, and so that class got to vote on a specific teacher that uh, really exemplified the Warhill way. If you have a, 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 a Warhill student or have had one, you know about the Warhill way. Um, and so that is uh, Mr. Corey Maddox uh, there who's receiving the, the, the Warhill way Crystal Apple Award. Uh, Crystal Apple Award. Um, I won't go through all the other ones quite as, but I'll just kind of point them out really quickly. At the bottom left, that's uh, at the uh, J.B. Bladen Elementary School, where students collect uh, these, these I, think, I think they're called Hive Pride tokens. Uh, they're the bees, um, and they collect those, and they, you know, build up this you know, really kind of beautiful space on their wall to, so they can see their progress. Um, I know we have a, a family or, or, you know, parent connected with uh, Claire Bird Baker because we already saw somebody answered in the chat about the, the, the growl. Um, and so similarly to the example from Stonehouse, that's uh, at Claire Bird Baker, they have this class um, class system uh, where they collect uh, uh, bear paws uh, and then teachers actually get them posted outside of their outside of their room when they when their classroom has earned the bear paws so that um, you know, it's a little bit of competition between the classes, but again, it motivates them. It kind of drives them a little bit. Um, and then the bottom right, uh, that's James River Elementary School, um, and they have, um, can't, it's like flipping dolphin recognition or something along those lines. I mean, they're the dolphins. I can't remember exactly what, what, what this is called, but I think every month they have a set of students. Again, they get nominated um, and they, they, you know, get this award um, again for demonstrating those behaviors that are going to lead them to be most successful. I told you they were fun, fun pictures. I love getting to share this kind of stuff with folks because it's, it's so exciting. All right. So like I said, um, you know, that even um, when, we, we really explicitly teach the behaviors, we provide feedback, provide acknowledgement and motivation. Um, you know, some of those less desired behaviors are still going to show up. And so another, a very important thing that those, those MTSS teams that Ashley talked about do is that they, they help to compile resources and supports um, for teachers in the building around how they can respond when students are not demonstrating those behaviors. So it's very focused on reteaching. Um, again, if you think about it the way that, that Ashley shared that, you know, if we're, if we're teaching behaviors, again, those behaviors that are going to be successful in school, as soon as make mistakes, again, with reading or with math or something like that, we give them an opportunity to improve. You know, we give them a second chance at it and we give them some instruction to help them do better. And so really try to treat, you know, most behaviors, um, with that lens of, okay, you made a mistake, here's some feedback, here's how you can do it better next time. Um, and again, mostly when possible, um, keeping students in, in the room, not taking away privileges. It doesn't mean that sometimes that's not necessary, and certainly those strategies can be very powerful in certain situations, but the primary focus again, um, is on reteaching, reinforcing the behaviors that we want to see. Um, and so schools, the teachers have um, a, a toolbox of, of interventions uh, on how they can respond uh, when students need it. I don't have any fun pictures of that kind of stuff, uh, but I'll let Ashley jump in on this next part. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed. I, I agree with Nick. I love seeing those pictures and the creative ways that all the schools have lined up their school-wide positive behavioral expectations and made connections to their mascots and um, the different things that are going on in their school. Um, so as we begin to wrap up this evening, we wanted to just have you walk away with 
two strategies um, that really seek to strengthen that whole homeschool connection. Um, and so one, hopefully with some of the resources that were linked in the chat tonight, um, you are walking away, many of you knew at the outset of, of this Family Academy, but hopefully you're walking away knowing your students' expectations at school. Um, and that provides an avenue for you to talk with your student about his or her behavior um, and how they're being acknowledged. And so that can range from whether or not they're earning tickets at Matthew Whaley to whether or not they're meeting the criteria to play in the three-on-three -three basketball tournament at Lafayette. Um, if these behavioral expectations work within your home and the way that your family wants to address and teach and support behavior, um, then there's also an opportunity to transfer some of this information to the settings in your own home. So you can almost imagine a matrix where you saw the different locations of classroom, hallways, cafeteria, um, what might behaviors look like that are safe, responsible, and respectful, not only in different areas in, in your homes and throughout your lives, but also when out in the community. Um, the other thing that you can do is talk to your student about additional ways that they can show. And just for sake of example on these slides, we picked a couple, um, respect, responsibility, and perseverance. Um, and then you can be looking for your child to demonstrate these things. So oftentimes we refer to that as catch them being good. And so what you can do is when you notice um, your child doing something that's particularly responsible um, at home or out in the community, you can call that out as an additional way to reinforce the development of these skills so that the positive behaviors extend beyond school and are really generalized um, so that they're just part of the way your child positively engages um, across environment, so home, community, and other settings. We are going to drop one last link in the chat, which is just a resource um, for you from the National Center on PBIS that specifically talks about ways that families um, can use principles of PBIS, many of which we've referenced tonight um, at home. So if this is of interest to you, um, you should have that resource as an additional reference as well.